Mr. Parmeshwaran Iyer, the CEO of Niti Aayog, that's the government's main think tank, and of course, a long career in the civil services, spearheading the Swachh Bharat mission. Mr. Iyer, what's really been interesting in this budget has been the focus on the capex expenditure, the focus on growth, and also a vision for the future. We're talking here about AI, we're talking about uh, accelerating startups and uh, agriculture. Do you think that's part of a larger uh, vision that the government currently has for how you, they'll see India. We heard Prime Minister Modi today talking about 2047, not 2024. Sure, Sonia. You know, this is the first time, actually, if you think of it, that a Prime Minister has articulated a vision for a developed country by 2047. And I think this budget is another building block towards that direction. There's no question that it's a budget for growth. But equally, it's a budget for inclusion. If you look at the very targeted interventions for the poor, the vulnerable, the backward, the disadvantaged, rural agriculture, in many ways, it's a budget for all. But let's, let's talk a little bit about the social sector. Mm -hmm. One of the most significant features of this budget is the announcement of the, the PM PVTG the Pradhan Mantri particularly vulnerable tribal group. This is a segment in the tribal population which is at the bottom of the ladder. 15,000 crores has been allocated for this mission and this uh, vulnerable population of about 28 to 30 lakhs scattered across the country will now get saturated with basic services to be provided to them over a period of three years. A very, very significant announcement and given this government's record on implementation on the ground, we are very confident that this will be achieved. And Niti had worked with the Secretary of Tribal Affairs and the Ministry mm -hmm. to put together this package. We actually made a trip to some of the tribal areas in Orissa right. to study the situation on the ground. So, but apart from that, you yes. have got the focus on the self-help groups for women, all 80 lakhs of them who will need a little bit more support for marketing and branding to increase incomes and increase livelihoods. Yes. Agriculture, horticulture, fisheries, a number of uh, very targeted segments have also been promoted in this budget. But Mr. Ayer, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, the Manrega figures, the overall outlay, uh, it's, it has gone up over the last four to five years. But what about infl inflation? I mean, the hike has not been that big that it accounts for inflation as it's gone up. So. When we're talking about social inclusion, when we're talking about, uh, you know, feeding people, giving them jobs, has enough been done when it comes to Manrega? In fact, the allocation's been cut for Manrega. Actually, they, you know, if, if you look at Manrega, Manrega is an Employment Guarantee Act. So if people need the work, it, they will be provided work under Manrega. But the livelihoods, again, Manrega, are also being used to create productive assets. So if you look at the, the misty the proposed coastline mangrove plantation program that again is going to be funded through uh, to a large measure through Manrega. So I think on the food security aspect as well, which you touched upon Vishnu, under the NFSA now, free food grain will be provided to the same target audience. So I think on that front as well, there is no cause for concern. I mean, this government is, is going to make sure that food security continues to be promoted with the focus it has been getting all along over the past few years. Uh, Mr. Ayer, uh, Nidhi here, I, I just wanted to, you know, uh, talk about the fact that, you know, at the moment there are these recession fears in other parts of the world, uh, so many global headwinds, but also concerns about a K-shaped recovery in India with the rich getting richer, the poor getting poorer. And we see that reflected in some of the statistics, for example, uh, four-wheeler sales uh, going up, but two-wheeler sales coming down to a decade uh, low. How does the budget address some of those concerns? Sure, Nidhi. Look, global headwinds, in fact, India has navigated them uh, pretty successfully with 7% uh, growth rate, the largest, the fastest growing largest economy in the world. So, you know, you can have a debate on and inflation has been contained. Uh, now, you can have a debate on whether it's K-shaped or V-shaped. The fact is that in the social sector, the social safety net is as strong as ever. I think this government, in terms of delivery of basic services over the last eight years, you know, whether you talk of uh, toilets, which pretty much help women and girls, tap connections, 
Uh, again, uh, you know, so that women and girls don't have to walk long distance to fetch water, we have 11 crore taps already there under the Jaljeevan mission. Mm -hmm. Bank accounts. So I think on all counts, there has been a huge thrust on social sector. So social infrastructure is as strong, if not stronger than the physical infrastructure in which uh, now 10 crores will be invested on, in terms of capital expenditure.